Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining me in a new video. I just want to say thank you to everyone who has stuck with my channel and has been patient with me while I take a, a little break. I hope to make lots of videos soon and I spend a lot of time on this one so I hope you all enjoy it. We are now going to be talking about the state of Alaska which is a state that I really would like to visit someday. It is the largest state in the US, and I believe it's double or more um, the size of the second biggest state. In this video we're going to be going over lots of things about Alaska, and I have created this PowerPoint which I hope is visually appealing, and I hope if you're watching and you've never been to Alaska, we can maybe travel there together today, and if you're from Alaska, I would love to hear from you in the comments about how you feel about living there. So, let's get started, and of course, we have to start with a map. It's a map of Alaska, which shows the different sections of the state. We have the southwest section right here, the south central section, the inside passage, which goes south and connects through Canada, the Yukon Territory. We have the capital of Juneau, right here. We have the interior section of the state with Fairbanks, which is another fairly large city. Although the biggest city in Alaska is Anchorage, down here in the south central area. We also have the Aleutian Islands, which I believe some are still controlled by Russia. I know there are many, many, many islands in this chain, and Russia is actually right here, so we are actually pretty close to Russia, um, the United States. Another section is the far north, which is, as you might imagine, the coldest section of the state, and much of it is inside of the Arctic Circle, and I believe the Arctic Circle is defined by um, the fact that it has permafrost, which means it has, um, a, a, has ground that never um, defrosts, it's always frozen, so even in the summertime it stays frozen. We have lots of little towns and things here, and one thing you definitely uh, should know about Alaska, it is the biggest state, but is also the least densely populated, which may seem pretty obvious. Um, even the biggest cities are, you know, fairly small compared to a lot of other places in the United States, um, and there's just so much wilderness, and so many different biomes and things going on here. It's a very, very interesting state. Let's move on to another map which has a lot of information, but I thought it was quite nice looking and, you know, I like the, the pictures of the animals on it and, um, you know, all the little blurbs and stuff. You can see, like, the mountain ranges here. It's like a, a 3D look at the, the seacoast. We also have some information about the natives of Alaska, which we will get into. And we will also go into the wildlife as well.
because there is a lot of it right in the state of Alaska. But yeah, we're not going to go too in depth into this page, but I, I thought it was a fun one to include. So let's move on and begin with a little lesson about the state of Alaska. And we're going to start with the state's early history, or before it was considered a state. So, we're going to start on the left. People have inhabited Alaska since 10,000 BCE. At that time, a land bridge extended from Siberia to eastern Alaska, and migrants followed herds of animals across it. The first European settlement was established in 1784 by Russians at Three Saints Bay near present-day Kodiak. Kodiak served as Alaska's capital until 1806, when the Russian-American Company, organized in 1799 under charter from the Emperor Paul I, moved its headquarters to Sitka, where there was an abundance of sea otters. The near extinction of the sea otter and the political consequences of the Crimean War from 1853 to 1856 were factors in Russia's willingness to sell Alaska to the United States. A formal proposal of $7.2 million was approved by the U.S. Congress, and the American flag was flown at Sitka on October 18, 1867. So at this time, in 1867, the U.S. owned Alaska, but it did not become a state until much later. And now we can move into some modern history. So, I guess it's, you know, good to know about the early history that, you know, we have lots of natives who still exist in Alaska and throughout Canada, and most of those are descendants from um, individuals who came over from Asia through a land bridge that used to exist between Russia and, and Alaska. It no longer exists there. <clears throat> so, let's begin with the modern history. Alaskans voted in favor of statehood in 1946 and adopted a constitution in 1956. Congressional approval of the Alaska Statehood Bill in 1958 was followed by formal entry into the Union in 1959. In 1968, the discovery of petroleum on lands fronting the Arctic Ocean gave promise of relief for Alaska's economy, but the problem of transportation across the state and the rest of the country held up exploitation of the fines. In 1989, the oil tanker Exxon Valdez ran off course in Prince William Sound, causing the most disastrous oil spill in North American history and inflicting enormous damage on the area's marine ecology and local economy. I was not alive when this happened, but I know it was a pretty big story when it occurred and, um, you know, people still talk about it today. It was a, a huge ship that uh, released lots and lots of oil into the sea, and uh, we also had another fairly large one in the Gulf of Mexico. It was a British Petroleum, um, I believe it was an oil rig. It might have been early, mid-2000s or so, maybe a little bit later. <clears throat> in the early 21st century, declining oil production was a major concern of Alaskans. The issue of whether to drill in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge in the National Petroleum Reserve, Alaska, and in the Beaufort and Chukchi Seas, continued to be hotly debated. Meanwhile, Alaska's foreign-born population continued to increase, as did tourism. Oops. Let's go back. So we've gone over a little bit of history of Alaska, and you know, to be honest, Alaska is a pretty young area of the world. Um, 
His history is not as extensive as many places, especially um, when you compare it to its statehood in the U.S. <clears throat> but people have existed there for a very long time. Um, now let's look, at it, look into some demographics. Let's see, um, you know, anthropological look at Alaska and who, and what type of people live there. So after years of conflict, the Athabascans, Alu Aluits, Inuit, Yupik, Tlingit, and Haida tribes are the only remaining Aborigines in Alaska. So a lot of these, again, were, um, a lot of these tribes were killed by Russians and I would assume Americans as well. Um, but there are still a lot of Aborigines that exist there. In 2019, the estimated population of Alaska was a little bit of a typo there. I guess it's, it is is because it's 2019 now. Oh. But the population was estimated at 735,720. That is an incredibly low amount of people. But to give you a reference point, my home state of New Hampshire has just over 1 million people about 1.2 and Rhode Island I believe has nearly 2 million maybe a little bit less maybe less than a million I'm actually not sure it's, it's somewhere around 1 to 2 million people and we will see a fun fact later regarding Rhode Island uh, and comparing its size to Alaska's so that is a really really low population the last night nationwide census in the United States was carried out in 2010, when the population of Alaska was officially counted at 710,231. That figure represents a growth of population of 13.3% from the year 2000. So Alaska is growing. Uh, lots of people want to move there. Um, I actually would love to move there <laughs> if it was feasible practical. I am a big fan of beautiful landscapes and I love the idea of wilderness. So, so some Alaska demographics. According to the most recent ACS, the racial composition of Alaska was 65.26% 65 65 white 14.22% Native American. Two or more races, 8.49%. Asian, 6.17%. Black or African American, 3.21%. Other races, 1.42%. And Native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander, 1.23%. <clears throat> so... That's actually a little bit more mixed than a lot of other places. New Hampshire has, I think, 70 or 80% uh, rate of, of uh, weight or ca Caucasian individuals. Let's take a look at the geography of Alaska. And as a side note, I hope everyone is enjoying the backgrounds and enjoying the picturesque views of the state of Alaska. Later on in the video we'll have a, a slideshow of pictures and uh, I have a little something special planned for that as well so I encourage you to stay until the end of the video or you can skip ahead now if you're not interested in this part because um, I have some really nice pictures and uh, a little bit extra as well. So Alaska is home to majestic mountains, glaciers, active volcanoes, huge tracts of forest and land, and some of the planet's most varied extremes of cold, heat, rain, snow, and wind. In addition, Alaska is the most northern, western, and eastern state, which may seem confusing at first, but um, I think it's because its relation to Russia and Asia makes it seem eastern. 
However, if you were to look at the United States as a whole, you would say that Maine is the most eastern state. So, some ma major geographical regions north to south include the Arctic Coastal Plain, the North Slope, Brooks Mountain Range, a central upland dissected by the Yukon River, the massive Alaska Mountain Range, the Pacific Coastal Areas, and Eastern Inside Passage, and the Alaskan Peninsula and Aleutian Islands of the Southwest. And then the picture behind this is Denali National Park, which is a humongous national park. We'll talk a little bit about it later. So let's just go over some of the wildlife that exists in, in Alaska. A lot of these species are not going to be surprising, but it's interesting to just go over, go over them anyways. So some of the native species in Alaska include grizzly bears, Kodiak bears, black bears, polar bears, caribou, moose, mountain goats, bison, doll or dal sheep, orca, salmon, trout, halibut, lampreys, herring, rockfish, sturgeon, bald eagles, Canada geese, boreal owls, osprey, horned puffins, snowy owls, wood frogs, northwestern salamanders, rough-skinned newts, leatherback sea turtles, and green sea turtles just to name a few. And some of the endangered species in uh, Alaska include Eskimo curlew, which I couldn't say I have any idea what that type of animal is. Humpback whale, bowhead whale, blue whale, stellar sea lion, western stock, fin whales, north pacific right whale, a say whale, leatherback turtle, and short-tailed albatross. You'll notice that a lot of those endangered species are uh, aquatic animals. So now let's talk about boreal forests. Now, uh, since Alaska is north far north in the northern hemisphere, uh, it is, is covered with a boreal forest which has a lot of evergreens and um, a lot of pine trees and, and those types of, of trees with um, you know, hard pine needles. Um, so the forests found in Alaska's interior are known as boreal forests. These forests extend from the Kenai Pen Peninsula to the Tanana Valley near Fairbanks, and as far north as the foothills of the Brooks Range. They stretch from the Porcupine River near the Canadian border and west down the Cuscoquim River Valley. Species with commercial value include white spruce, quaking aspen, and paper birch. Other species include black spruce balsam poplar, and larch. The taiga, or boreal forest, is the world's largest land biome. In North America, it covers most of inland Canada and parts of the northern contiguous United States. There are two major types of taiga. The southern part is the closed canopy forest, consisting of many closed space trees with a mossy ground cover. The other type is the lichen woodland or sparse taiga with trees that are farther spaced and lichen ground cover. The latter is common in the northernmost taiga. So um, <clears throat> you will see less and less trees and, and uh, plants and other um, forms of life the norther you go, of course, and you get a little bit more sparse. That's a quick look at 
the forest. Now let's go into the climate of Alaska, which is probably, you know, one of the most interesting aspects of the state. So let's look at first the summer in Alaska. So May is generally the driest month across the state, even in the temperate rainforest of the Inside Passage. By July, daytime temperatures in the interior can average in the 70 degrees range, though it has been known to reach well into the 90s, while temperatures in the coastal areas and higher elevations rarely get above 65 degrees. Temperatures across the state start cooling in August and September, triggering a, a, a riotous display of fall colors across Alaska's tundra and forest landscapes. And, uh, you know, it's fall time around here, and um, living in the state of New Hampshire, I uh, am blessed with gorgeous fall colors in the trees, and um, I'll be making a trip up soon to the mountains, going on hikes and doing a little camping. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I really love this time of year. Um, and that brings me into winter. So winter in Alaska is roughly October through March. Coastal areas are more temperate, rarely falling below 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Snow blankets much of south central during the winter months. You may start seeing snow in interior as early as October. Temperatures may dip below minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit during the winter months. Some areas like Utkiagvik are ge uh, technically deserts and get less than 5 inches of, of precipitation a year. So that area, I believe, is far, far north in Alaska. Um, now, let's go into glaciers. Alaska is filled with them, and they are beautiful. I just love how striking that blue color is. So glaciers form where more snow falls than melts over a period of years, compacts into ice, and becomes thick enough to begin to move. That is, a snow patch becomes a glacier when the deepest layers begin to deform due to the weight of the overlying snow and ice. There are 616 officially named glaciers in Alaska, and many more unnamed glaciers. The Alaska Almanac estimates that Alaska has 100,000 uh, glaciers, and there are approximately 1,000 glaciers in Glacier Bay National Park alone. And that is an incredible amount. Scientists from the University of Alaska in the U.S. Geological Survey estimate that Alaska is losing ice at the rate of 75 billion metric tons a year. They calculate that Alaska's glaciers and frozen rivers are melting fast enough to cover the whole state with 30 centimeters of water, nearly a foot, every seven years. Which is pretty sad, and um, for some reason it seems like the last few years, climate change has not only gotten more concerning, but um, to the point where it seems like uh, we, we need to act a lot faster than we are. But let's take a look at Alaska's natural resources. So Alaska is believed to contain more than 30% of the nation's known recoverable offshore resources. Alaska's oil and gas industry has produced more than 17 billion barrels of oil and 13 billion cubic feet of nat natural gas. The Trans-Alaska Pipeline System, or TAPS, includes the Trans-Alaska Crude Oil Pipeline, 11 pump stations, several hundred miles of feeder pipelines, and the Valdez Marine Terminal. TAPS is one of the world's largest pipeline systems. Other common resources include dairy, crabs, fish, forestry or lumber, fur, greenhouse products, hay, potatoes, reindeer, platinum, gold, shrimp, and 
vegetables. So, I mean, it's not the most fertile place, I would imagine. Um, but there's still, you know, there are quite a few things that can be grown there. Now, let's go into the Northern Lights. And, um, I, I probably have many reasons why I would love to visit Alaska, but seeing the Northern Lights is probably at the top of the list. <clears throat> so, this is what uh, creates the Northern Lights. When charged particles from the sun strike atoms in Earth's atmosphere, they cause electrons in the atoms to move at a, at a higher energy state. When the electrons drop back to a lower energy state, they release a photon light. This process creates the beautiful aur aurora, or northern lights. The aurora belt in Alaska's great interior and Arctic regions is among the most active in the world. Northern lights trips are typically best made in late fall and winter slash early spring, though they can be seen throughout the winter months on nights with clear skies. If you visit Alaska in November, December, or January, you will experience a very short period of daylight providing a unique experience in the high northern hemisphere. In February and March, there are longer daylight hours for you to enjoy with evenings that still offer maximum viewing chances. So of course, um, it's better to view the lights at night, which means that if you go in the winter, you will have a better chance of seeing them. But I just think it's so interesting. Um, and sometimes I wonder, you know, back when science could explain the northern lights what did people think when they looked up in the sky and they saw that happening you know how would you explain that it just injures me all right so we've gone over most of the things i wanted to go over as far as geography and history and we looked at a few maps and some wildlife but let's go over a few things that you can do if you're going to visit Alaska. Now, of course, many of the things that I'm going to list are going to involve nature and doing things outside. Because that's why people go to Alaska. They don't go to live in the city. They go to see beautiful landscapes. So, the White Pass and Yukon Railway. The White Pass and Yukon route is a Canadian and American narrow gauge railroad that links Skagway in Alaska and Whitehorse in Yukon. So you can get on the train and see some amazing views. The Aurora Ice Museum, Fairbanks. Located in the Chenna Hot Springs Resort, the Aurora Ice Museum is open year round, created with over 1,000 tons of ice and snow. The muse museum is kept at 25 degrees Fahrenheit, so visitors are loaned parkas to tour the museum in comfort. Running Reindeer Ranch in Fairbanks. The ranch owner and manager, Jane, who has lived most of her life in Alaska, will take you on a walk through the beautiful, dense birch forest with the reindeer and engage you in reindeer games, tell you about the forest, the reindeer's home, explain all their adaptations to life in the Arctic. Denali National Park Preserve, which we saw a picture of earlier. So Denali National Park Preserve um, is Alaska's first national park, and it spans across six million acres of wilderness, with only one road that bisects the park. The park was established in 1917 by the United States Congress in order to protect the wildlife living within the Alaska range. I think what that's one of the amazing things about the state is you can have this huge expanse of land that is bigger than anything you can even comprehend. And you can just walk and walk and walk and just see things that no one else has seen before. There's so much wilderness up there. I, for some reason that just interests me so much. So we have some more things. The Mendenhall Glacier, 
lies near the coast mountains in the Juneau ice field. It's a hun it's a fifteen hundred square mile left over um, from the ice age. The Anan or An Anan Wildlife Observatory. Here you'll find the largest run of pink salmon in Alaska. Even if you're not an angler, you'll want to visit because this large population of salmon support the large population of black and brown bears in the area. The Alaska Highway, running from Dawson Creek in British Columbia, Canada, to the Yukon Territory in Fairbanks. It's roughly 1,387 miles long, and it goes through small towns like Charlie Lake, Fort Nelson, Upper Leard, Johnson's Crossing, Jake's Corner, and Talk. And then the Inside Passage, which we actually mentioned a little bit earlier. Most people visit the Inside Passage on cruise ships, charter boats, or even yachts. The passage is home to several native tribes, including the the Simshan, the Haida, and Tlingit tribes. Part of the passage covers Tongass, Tongass National Forest, which covers 17 million acres and is the largest national park in the United States. Now, let's do some facts about Alaska, and I believe this should be the last slide of information. And then from here, we're going to go into some really nice pictures that I picked out. So let's go over some facts. Alaska was admitted as a state on January 3rd, 1959. It was the 49th state to be admitted uh, right before Hawaii. And that is why it's called the, the Last Frontier. Its area is 656,425 miles, which is the largest land area of any state by far. Um, its capital is Juneau. The largest city is Anchorage, and both of those cities are in the southern part of Alaska. The state's nickname is The Last Frontier. Its population is 753,132. Its state bird is the willow ptarmigan. The state flower is the forget-me-not. And the state tree is the Sitka spruce. So here's some fun facts on the right hand side of the page. Outsiders first discovered Alaska in 1741 when Danish explorers Vitis Jonasen Bering sighted it on a voyage from Siberia. Joe Juno's 1888 discover, discovery of gold ushered in the gold rush era. I'm assuming that's where the capital got its name. In 1943, Japan invaded the Aleutian Islands, which started the 1,000 mile war, the first battle fought on American soil since the Civil War. Alaska accounts for 25% of the oil produced in the United States. And uh, I think the oil supply in Alaska is a, a kind of a, a big issue right now. A lot of people are trying to destroy a lot of Alaska's wilderness and herd the animal species in order to um, harvest more oil. And here is the fact about Rhode Island. The state of Rhode Island could fit into Alaska 425 times keeping in mind that Rhode Island has a bigger population than Alaska does, which is just amazing to think about. The Trans-Alaska Pipeline moves up to 88,000 barrels of oil per hour on its 800-mile journey to Valdez. And there we have it. Let's, uh, let's move on few pictures that I want to show you. Um, the first
first two are actually going to um, be the state symbols. So this is a forget-me-not flower, which is the state flower of Alaska. I think it's nice. I like the I like that light blue color with the yellow. And now we have the state flower. We'll show the willow ptarmigan, which is the state bird. Kind of looks like a chicken, a little bit, like a little, like a hen, or like a, a mix between a, a hen and a pheasant or something. And then the next slide I'm gonna go is going to be the last slide where I'll be talking. The rest of our slideshow will just be pictures. So this is a look at the city of Anchorage, which as I mentioned is the biggest city in Alaska. And uh, just looking at its skyline, it doesn't look very big, does it? And I always, I just find it amazing that people live here all year. But uh, I respect their, um, their ability to tough out the, the cold winters. Anyways, that's going to be it for me. I just want to thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I will be making more videos soon, so again, thank you all for sticking around, those of you who have. Um, and I hope to make more content soon. I hope you enjoy the rest of the slideshow.